Have your shorts stopped getting views? Today, we're gonna break down why that may be and how you can fix that here on The Boost by vidIQ. All right, Jen, shorts, shorts, shorts. What everyone wants to have is short success, but some people lately have been complaining that their shorts have stopped working. Stopped working, stopped getting traffic, have just gotten zero views. There's a lot of things that feel like are going wrong with shorts right now. On the new tubers Reddit, I noticed a lot of people are complaining about how their shorts are just not getting views anymore. Like they used to get views and then they stopped. So I guess the question is, has something changed at YouTube? But before we get into that, let's talk a little bit about what shorts are and how they came to be. VidIQ has actually been on the cutting edge of shorts because we've been doing shorts and covering shorts since 2020. I mean, it's been a long time. We've known about these things. I think it's safe to say we have some experience in what we're talking about. And when they first were released, you used to have to wait up to three days before views would come in on your YouTube shorts. You used to have to hashtag them and do all these extra things to get them to work. But now you can get views within an hour of posting your YouTube short. The way YouTube shorts work is once you upload your short and it doesn't have any information about who your audience is, it just shotguns that video to as many people as possible and gives them an opportunity to engage. Kind of like your normal normal videos, but in the case of shorts, it just tries a lot of different people all at the same time. And some of those people might not be your regular viewers or even the audience that you're going after. Yeah, and this is kind of a problem because if that short gets thrown out to a bunch of people who really aren't interested in your topic, it's gonna fail. People aren't gonna watch it, they're gonna swipe through it. It's gonna die on a vine. When shorts first came out, there weren't that many creators and there was a lot of interest. You could put just about anything you wanted to out there and it was gonna get a lot of views. But nowadays, pretty much everyone's doing YouTube shorts. So unfortunately, Unfortunately, your shorts have to be really, really good. But what does that mean? Travis, let's pull up some metrics from some really successful shorts and see what we're looking at, what we're dealing with. We got one right here that has 1.3 million views. And as you can see here, it has an average view percentage of 90%. But that's not the only thing you need to look at. You also need to look at relevancy and one other metric that you can pull up in your analytics, which is the viewed versus swiped away. And on this particular page, we can see that 84% decided to view it versus the 15% that swiped away. But of course, this is just one video. Let's take a look at another video to see if it's the same. And this one, we're seeing almost the same percentage of watch through with 93%. So let's see what our swipe away is for this one. And here we can see it's 74% viewed versus 25% swiped away. Now, does that mean if you hit these numbers that you are guaranteed success? No, but success does tend to leave clues. It's also worth noting that if your metrics are looking better than this, it doesn't mean that you're guaranteed success either. There's lots more that goes into it, which of course we're going to go through. So a lot of success for YouTube shorts comes in the the fact that people are engaged and are watching as much, if not the entire short, which means your hook and your storytelling better be on point. Jen, what are some tips for this? Some tips for this are going to be similar to how you would script a hook for long form content, except just like short form content in general, we're dealing with shorter everything. And that means a shorter amount of time to get that hook out there. Typically with long form content, when we're talking about around that 15 second mark to have your hook and intro be wrapped up to some those expectations in shorts you have like one second and that one second is determining if someone is swiping away or if you've hooked them in so so important to have those hooks spend extra time crafting them even if you're spending less time on the content in general put that time into these hooks and it's really important to understand that you have less time to get into the action than you do in regular content don't do a whole introduction in the short that takes 15 seconds you should be in the middle of the action within three seconds of that short starting if if you're not, you may not be getting the numbers that you're looking for. I think a really great way to think about this is in long form content, typically we'll build up to kind of the peak of the content and really where the climax of that story is happening versus short, you almost want to start in that drama. So say I'm going to go skydiving in a long form content. I might have some of the storytelling include me going to sign up or getting on the plane or I'm nervous. Whereas if I was making a short about it, I'm going to be jumping out of that plane as the short starts. Starting in that high, high moment and then kind of working your way down is more of a storytelling strategy for short form content. And also don't just do random shorts and expect them all to perform the same. Much like you do for long form content, you still kind of need a niche and to niche down somewhat at the very least if you want success on each short that you upload. It doesn't mean that you have to do the same niche as you do on your long form content. We've seen different channels use different types of niches across long form and short form. However, within short 
short form itself, it should still cover at least one topic so people can come back and watch more and more. You definitely want to identify a similar strategy that you would take with any other content, and that's having the opportunity for repeat ideas, to have it within the same type of concept. So if I'm walking around New York City trying every dollar slice of pizza I can find, that's a great way to set yourself up to have that continue in different restaurants with the same idea that people can have that shared interest in for multiple pieces of content. We've also found that you can have evergreen shorts if you answer a question in your shorts. This video has over 1 million views and most of the views are coming from YouTube search. That's something you don't typically see on shorts, but you can take advantage of if you want more views on your YouTube shorts. Wait, Travis, we talked about this in our search video about how people are turning towards short form content to get an answer quicker when searching for something on YouTube. You're absolutely right. We talked about how YouTube search actually works. We'll leave a link in the description below for that one because that is going to answer a lot of your questions. So some people are asking why their videos stop after like 300 or so views. And that's kind of what we talked about earlier. Basically, your content has been shared to a group of people who have not engaged with it at a level that YouTube thinks is successful or cannot find other viewers for your content. That number could be 300 one day. It could be 200 the next. It could be 10,000, but it happens to every single video. It goes out, gets some views, and then eventually stops. So you're saying it's totally normal for content to stop. Is that fair to say? It's always normal. Some videos are going to stop dead in their tracks and never get another view again. And then some randomly two years later are going to take off. So now you have a better understanding as to why some of your shorts may be underperforming and some things that you can do to start making some changes. But if you want to work on that evergreen content targeting search, we have this awesome video right here that's got everything you need to know.